Hey, uh, good day, uh, Facebook and everybody. Hope all is well. This is Reverend Darren Barnes uh, coming with you with a de uh, devotional for today. Um, you look at uh, the state of the world, man. You can wake up one morning, uh, everything's turned upside down. The world, as you know, changed. Um, you can see that the president has COVID. Then one day, um, it's quite, you know, it's taxes. Then one day, it's police brutality. Then one day, uh, it's the unemployment numbers. You could be so overwhelmed by things that are going on globally. You get lost in the things that you have going on in your life. And there are times you got to ask God, like, man, I know everything else is going bad, but Lord, what about me? I need help myself. I need deliverance. Um, we can look at somebody who had a lot of problems one day, and we can learn the lesson that he learned, and we can come to the same conclusion that uh, David did. If you have your Bibles or any other electronic device, uh, then we're just going to read Psalms 3 uh, in its entirety. Lord, uh, how they increase that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many that uh, would say of my soul, there is no help from him in God. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, the lifter of my head. I cried out to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and I slept. I awakened for the Lord sustained me. I would not be afraid of 10,000 people that set themselves against me around about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of ungodly. Salvation belongs unto thy God. Thy blessing is upon, upon thy people. Now, when David wrote Psalms 3, uh, he really had a lot of problems. Um, David woke up one morning um, and his son uh, decided that he wanted to be king and he was going to take it by force. So David and his whole household, his wives, his servants, his councilmen, his concubines, uh, not sure which order he took everybody in, <laughs> but they all got up and left and they were on a run from his son, uh, Albumson. Uh in addition to taking the kingdom, he had every intention on killing his father. Uh, sometimes the biggest threats you have to your sanity and your peace can come from within your own household. While on the run, the majority of Israel turned on David and his family. They sided with his son. Now, this is David, the same man who slayed Goliath. Uh, this is David, the same man who recovered the ark from the Philistines. Uh, this is David, the second king of Israel. Uh, it's an amazing when you are going through a hard time yourself, the people close to you or the people you help, all of a sudden they develop a short case of short term memory loss when you need help. Although this is one of the worst periods of his life, uh, he wrote Psalms 3 as a hymn of worship and prayer. Um, and we, by the end of the text, we can come to the same conclusion that he did. Uh, no matter what you're going through, you can say, but thou, O Lord. Uh, if we look at the first couple of verses, Psalms 3, 1 and 2, Lord, how they increase that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many which say of my soul, there be no help from him and God. Uh, now, God, David is telling God how big his problems are, how they increase their trouble me. How many are they that rise up against me? Many uh, which say of my soul, there be no help from him and God. David is telling God his predicament. And this isn't a figure of speech. This is literal. Uh, in 2 Samuel 17, 1 through 4 and 11 and 13, um, album Sums advisor said, let's take 12,000 people and we go chase David tonight. Somebody said, no, that wasn't a good idea. They settled on in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 11, verses 13. Let I advise you, let all of Israel from Dan to Bersheba, as numerous as the sands on the seashore, be gathered with you and you lead him to battle. Then we will attack him wherever he may be found. We will fall on him as the dew settles on the ground. Now, that's a definition of you won't smoke. I know we have problems, but we never had a whole nation of people on us and then somebody say we go drag we go make sure there's enough people as the sand on this uh sands on the seashore now 
you see, we can, like David, you can say, how they increase that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me, which is true in his case. Many would say of my soul, there's no help from him and God. Now, we may not have a whole nation against us, but our, our troubles can increase by sickness, job loss, financial hardship, uh, car problems, things of that nature, or life. You can just wake up one morning and life just knock at your door and your whole world is turned upside down and you didn't do anything to get in this position. Hard times uh, and troubles can knock on your door and a floodgate of problems overtake you and your household. And because your trouble increase, the many that rise up against you is in the form of financial problems, marital problems, or family problems. You can feel the pressure of life closing in so bad, you get to wonder, where is God? Just like David, God's own people, i.e. Christians or church people, they can turn their back on you, have no compassion on you when you are going through something, or they can stab you in the back sharper than any sword the world can throw at them. The question becomes, what do you do when they and many rise up against you? When they and many rise up against you, we need to look at our predicament and we need to take a pause. Psalms verse three. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. The glory, you're the lifter of my head. The word but neglates or cancel everything that goes before it and is generally accepted as a signal that something really important Part of the sentence is coming up. I like the food you cook, but it could have lose use a little bit more seasoning. I like the outfit you wear, but did you really have to do your hair like that? When you say but, you just throw out everything that was said previously before it. But thou, O oh Lord, can change your mood from dejection to confidence. I lost my job, but thou, O oh Lord. I'm single, but thou, O Lord. I don't know how to pay my bills, but thou, O Lord. My house and my car needs major repairs, but thou, O Lord. God is the only one who can lift the afflictor's head. This is what he does. God has the ability to lift your head because he knows what you are going through. Furthermore, the lifter of my head relates to a divine action or sovereign action, which may include restoration to a former position. God does not only lift the head of the afflicted or the weary. He will also lift the head of the sinner who has his face down on the ground, plead for mercy. You can have problems and your head could be down wondering if God will help you. You could be so tired and stressed out, you can have your head bowed down. But if you have sinned and you know if you sinned from God, God wants to hear equally from the you just when you have problems, just when things are going bad. That same God who loves you when things are going wrong, who loves you during trials, is that same God you can go to no matter what you've done or you're doing, you can go to him and plead for mercy. David realized no matter what I do, I can go to God. He can change his mood because he remembered one thing about good by God. God always keeps his promises. Psalms 3, uh, 4, 5 through 6. I cried out to the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and I slept. I awake for the Lord sustained me. I would not be afraid of 10,000 people that set themselves against me round about. David can rest because he earnestly knew that he prayed for God, the great prayed for help and God heard him. We can be so stressed out that we fail to see that God is comfort, trying to comfort us. Songs of Solomon's 
uh, chapter 2, verse 6. His left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me. The hand of God was David pillow. The same God who gave David rest after chasing, after a whole nation was around him. The same God who wants us to lay down with his hand under our head. With the hand of the gracious and the omnipotent God under your head, you can become inaccessible to fear and doubt. David wakes up the next morning renewed because he remember God is a deliverer. No matter what you go through, God is a deliverer. One of God's track record, his track record and his characteristic is his ability to deliver. Psalms 34 and 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me out of all my fears. No matter what you're scared of, you can go to God. What that is, and he said, I would deliver you from all of your fears. God made a covenant with David. He promised a descendant will always be on his throne. In the back of his mind, David knew that God, you made a promise. When God makes a promise, they're always yes. No matter how many promises uh, God has made, they are yes in Christ. So through him, the amen is spoken to us by the glory of God. We say amen at the end of our prayers because through Jesus, God say yes. Jesus is the amen. When you say amen, you're saying yes to Jesus because I know you finished everything. You're saying yes to Jesus. You're saying yes uh, you say amen because he is the finisher of our faith. Everything God has promised from Moses to David to Abraham to Isaac, with that same God who made those promises, then those promises are available to you. Furthermore, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter how bad you think you've messed up, you have to understand, though Davis grievously sinned, and I'll explain how he got in this situation, resulting in his present trouble, God's promise with him was not broken. God was still with him no matter how bad he messed up. No matter what you've done or you're doing, you have to know that God is still with you. And before I move on, doubting the divine mercy of God can result in delayed deliverance. Doubting the divine mercy of God can result in delayed deliverance. Doubting God's ability to be merciful to you and your situation, you're delaying seeing how merciful God can be to you and your household. When David realized God is a redeemer, just like we need to realize God is a redeemer. Psalms 3, uh, 7 through 8. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you have struck all my enemies on the cheek. You have shattered the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. May, you be, may your blessing be upon your people. In that text, you see God's track record with David. Smitten, the past tense, a smite, a strike. Broken, the past tense, a broke. Oh, my God, the God that I worship, that same God you worship for getting you out of trouble in the past is the same God who will deliver you in the future. Psalms 50 and 15. Trust me in your time of trouble. I will rescue you and you will give me glory. God will rescue you and you will give him glory. The same God who got you out of what you did in the past. He's the same God who will get you out of your problems in the future. And God is the God of restoration. No matter what you're going through, God can restore you. Do not think for a second that God will cast you away. And the God of all grace who calls you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, if you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, steadfast. David knew that God was a restorer. It's interesting about the story. Dave got in this situation because he had adultery with a woman and plotted to kill her husband. He successfully killed her husband, all trying to cover up a pregnancy. Until you do something like that, you are in good company. 
know that when you say, but thou, O Lord, you negating that all my things I've done in the past. Yes, God, I know I've sinned, but thou, O Lord, you said you were you are faithful and just to forgive of us, of us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You, God, I know I need my bills paid, but you said that you will supply all your needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. No matter what you're going through, you can list all your prayers out to God, but make sure you say, but thou, O Lord, and just like David, you will realize you are a shield for me. You're my glory. You are the lifter of my head. This is by our head in prayer. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you gave a template for David went through. You're the same God who got him out of trouble even when he got in it, Lord. But Lord, through Jesus, uh, we can come to the boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy, Lord. First and foremost, anybody listen to this message, God, I intend to intercede for them. Uh, Lord, forgive us for anything we've done, knowingly, unknowingly. Uh, Lord, for every anybody that has a head bowed down, lift them up, Lord, because you are the lifter of our head. God, we come to you. No matter what our problems are, we're saying, but thou, O Lord, whatever we said previously, Lord, we're coming to you, but thou, O Lord. So somebody who's listened to this message, God, do something only what you can do. Glorify yourself. Let their praises be on your lip. Remind everyone of your track, your track record. You're the same God who got us out of trouble in the past. You're the same God who sustains us while we're going through it today. And you're the same God who will go get us out of trouble in the future. Not because of what we did. It's all about what your son Jesus did for us. He died for us. He raised him from the dead. And most importantly, he's alive. He's at your right hand interceding for us. Lord Jesus, for everyone hearing this message, intercede for them, Lord, and deliver them, God, because of your goodness and grace. We love you. We honor you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, my name is Reverend Darren Barnes. Um, you take care and remember, but thou, O oh Lord.